As we heard earlier in the programme, the number of blind people or those with severely impaired sight in China is between 13 and 17 million, depending on how the condition is defined. And while the China Association for the Blind and other organisations work hard to educate the public about the abilities and needs of this sector of society, prejudice and discrimination are unfortunately still widespread. BUN's Neva Wyman reports now on one Beijing-based initiative which has been strikingly successful in giving a voice to this long silence group. Wang Long works at one of the myriad massage clinics scattered across the city of Beijing. And like many in his profession, Wang Long is blind, one of nearly 70,000 blind people who live amongst 15 million sighted people in this teeming capital. But this segment of the city's population remains largely invisible, unseen and for the most part forgotten by a society that has been slow to change its attitudes and a government that has only recently started to address their needs. Many disabled people say they feel both the authorities and society treat them with condescension and at best as charity cases. Haiyan, who is visually impaired, and Huang Pang, who is completely blind, are both from a rural area in nearby Hebei province, and they also work as masseurs in Beijing. Clients sometimes are not very sympathetic. They look down at us. I hope the state will give more opportunities for studying. Few educational opportunities exist for the disabled outside big cities, and the number of all disabled people in higher education, not just the blind, is just around 20,000. That's just half a percent of the disabled student age population. But it's not all bad news. Initiatives involving blind and sighted people working together to improve the situation do exist. The One Plus One Cultural Exchange Center in southern Beijing not only offers training and opportunities to visually impaired people in its advice center, online radio and sound studio, it also offers hope to millions around the country through its broadcasts. Most of its dozen or so employees who receive training from the BBC World Service Trust are either blind or visually impaired. Yang Qingfeng says the worst problem is a lack of knowledge. This leads to the perception that people who can't see are helpless. The big problem is that people don't understand this segment of society. They think you can't see, so you can't actually do anything. So we're trying to change that. Communications officer at the center, Maggie Sun, is cited. She believes that education and example can change attitudes. Disabled persons are not really uh, involved in the society, uh, not included in, the, uh, in their community, and um, there's not enough integration for disabled person. In one plus one is trying to show the public what disabled people can do. Most of listeners, uh, when they listen to it, they don't know it's done by blind people or disabled people. So once they realize it's done by blind producers, so blind people, they were all uh, always very um, uh, amazed by it. Because the mainstream media here in China yeah. provides little useful information for disabled people about matters such as their legal rights, education and employment. But initiatives like this address these topics and, above all, give disabled people a voice of their own. One Plus One is a government-recognized NGO and it makes programs that are broadcast on over 75 Chinese radio stations, reaching as many as 300 million listeners around the country. Part of their stated mission is to challenge social attitudes and promote the creation of equal opportunities for the disabled in China. But though perceptions in larger cities may be gradually changing, those who grow up in rural areas still face an uphill battle. In rural area, the family, because of traditional uh, mentality of Chinese people, uh, they, the fat parents doesn't uh, intend to send disabled children to go to school. And regarding the issue of why China's disabled population is so little in evidence, Yang Qingfeng has this to say. Uh, if there were more job opportunities, of course, disabled people would go out. Also, secondly, regarding attitudes, if a disabled person goes out and people stare just like an animal, so the disabled person doesn't want to go out. Sun compares this situation in China with what she knows from her contacts overseas. I know that uh, there are uh, different 
uh, job opportunities for disabled person like they could become lawyer, teacher, professor, uh, accountant. Uh, but in China, uh, because most of the disabled person, 80% of the disabled person live in rural area, uh, they don't have very much opportunity to uh, receive the same education as a non-disabled person. But for Li Ning, it's not just a matter of waiting for help. She says changing public attitudes starts at home with people with disabilities showing what they can do by helping themselves. Disabled people should take opportunities to work and take part in social activities so as to gradually overcome worrying about people looking and not being understood so as to change people's attitudes. While the atmosphere at one plus one is lively, fun and optimistic, no one here is under any illusions about the scale of the task ahead. Even the sheer numbers and distances involved in China are obstacles not faced by most other countries. But initiatives like this offer blind people across China at least a glimpse of what can be achieved when self-belief, understanding, courage and a little help come together. Yuva Wyman, BON. This is a warm in there. Now, it can seem surprising to those of us who live in the city that there are these attitudes which prevail towards blind people, given that the infrastructure in place here is so uh, sophisticated. You have ramps uh, all over the city, you have these markings built on the pavements, braille, uh, access to the disabled, I mean, all over the place, but very, very, very uncommon to see, to see uh, partially sighted people uh, wandering the streets of the city. So that does suggest that perhaps it's not a question of infrastructure, it's more a question of attitudes. That's right. That, as you said, the infrastructure is, is pretty good. It's certainly better than London uh, and European capitals that I've been to. And a, a lot of that is down to uh, meeting legal requirements here in China. Uh, they have to put these, these structures in place, which is great. But yes, you just don't see people using it. Now, some people uh, have commented on why this might be. There's actually an opinion piece in the biggest selling English language uh, newspaper here, China Daily, which is a government run paper. And the commented, commentator here saying, you know, I've lived here, it's written by a foreigner. They're saying, I've lived here for five years. I've never seen a blind person on the street. Um, they, he, this guy actually followed the route uh, of the, uh, followed the route along the pavements where all this infrastructure is and followed the route down into the subway using the braille and said, you know, there's obstructions all the way along the line. Yes. And that again points to the ignorance um, and the lack of education uh, regarding this issue. People um, still considering, uh, uh, the, undervaluing uh, blind people and thinking that because you're blind, because you have a physical defect, that uh, you, you, you know, you're, you're not all there mentally, which of course is clearly not the case. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, this radio station is clearly doing some really interesting and, and good work on this and trying to change people's attitudes. Yeah, it's changing perceptions, as we heard from the piece. Uh, the surprise that people express when they, they see that they don't sound like a blind person, don't sound like a disabled person. So certainly some progress being made.